hello dear students in this video we will study about forces and uh, equilibrium we will start with basic definition of force it is basically a factor which produces or tends to produce acceleration in any body first of all we will discuss the components of uh, forces Let's suppose a force F is acting at angle theta with x axis We can see that this force F is making an angle theta with x axis and uh, we are supposed to find its vertical and uh, horizontal components we know that uh, if we apply head to tail rule on this diagram if we apply head to tail rule at this diagram we will be able, we will be able to find this relation f is equal to fx plus fy Now this component is called Fx, it is a horizontal component and it, it is working along x axis and this component is y component and it is working, it is working along the y axis and uh, if we add these two components we will have this force F. You know that in this triangle if we find cos theta we will have uh, fx over f and if we find sine theta in this triangle we will have uh, fy over f and if we simplify these relations we will have fx is equal to f cos theta and uh, fy is equal to f sine theta so this is horizontal component of this force and this is vertical component of this force and uh, if you want if you want to find the angle of this force the angle between this force f and x axis we can divide these two relations if we divide these two relations we will have uh, f sine theta over f cos theta this will be equal to fy over fx and this will become tangent theta so we will have theta is equal to tangent inverse of fy over fx so in this way we can find the direction of this force or we can find the angle between this force f and uh, x axis we will divide both components y component and uh, x component and then <coughs> and then we will take tangent inverse of this function okay now after this we have a definition which is called equilibrium we know that uh, Equilibrium is a condition in which <coughs> sum of all forces <coughs> acting upon a body is zero or we can also say that if net force acting upon a body is zero then the body is said to be in the state of equilibrium. For this chapter we will have these two conditions that summation fx will be equal to zero and uh, summation fy will be equal to zero it means the, the sum of uh, all horizontal forces and sum of all vertical forces must be equal to zero this will be the condition of equilibrium in this chapter if we talk about equilibrium we have uh, a very very useful theorem that is called lemis theorem lemis theorem Let's suppose we have uh, three forces, three coplanar and uh, concurrent forces. Let's suppose this is force F1, 
this is force F2 and this is force F3 and uh, let's suppose the angle opposite to the force F1 is alpha and the angle which is opposite to force F2 is beta and the angle which is opposite to force F3 is gamma. Now this theorem states that if these three forces are in equilibrium it means that uh, the sum of these three forces will be equal to zero. If this conditions, if this condition holds then we can have a mathematical relation between these three forces and these three angles. We will have that relation as uh, F1 is equal to sine alpha. Any force divided by sine of the angle which is opposite to that force that will become F2 over sine beta will be equal to F3 over sine gamma. This is uh, another form of uh, sine law. The law we have uh, in trigonometry. This is similar to the sign sign law 20. okay now we have another definition which is called friction friction it is a force which opposes the motion between two surfaces for example if we are dragging an object at a surface we will have to apply force because we will face some resistance that resistance which opposes the applied force or which opposes the motion between two surfaces is called friction and we have uh, some types of uh, frictions This force is denoted by a small f, static friction, limiting friction and uh, kinetic friction. It happens some uh, sometimes that uh, we apply a force at a body but the body doesn't move even after the application of force so there is a factor <coughs> which is not letting the body to move even after the application of force that factor is called the static friction so when two bodies or two surfaces are at rest the friction between both surfaces will be called static friction and after static friction we have maximum static friction that is called limiting friction it is maximum amount of amount of static friction maximum amount of static friction when the uh, applied force exceeds the limiting friction we will have movement in body so this friction limiting friction it is maximum amount of static friction if we want to if we want to move a body we will have to apply a force which is greater than limiting friction or the maximum amount of static friction and uh, if two bodies if uh, a body is moving at a surface for example if we are dragging an object if we are dragging a table at a floor then the friction between the table and the floor is called kinetic friction in this case a surface will be moving at another surface so if one surface is moving while other sur surface is at rest or if both surfaces are moving the friction between both surfaces will be called kinetic friction and we have uh, a formula for friction that is called F is equal to mu R. Mu is uh, the coefficient of friction. It is different for different surfaces. For example, the coefficient of friction between iron and wood is different. The, co the coefficient of friction between wood and paper is different. So we will have different values of coefficient of kinetic friction for different objects. And R is uh, a normal force. It is normal force normal component of force and uh, this force normal force it is always perpendicular to the direction of motion for example if 
this is a surface and uh, a body this body is moving along this direction the direction of these two arrows now this will be the direction of normal force which is perpendicular to the movement of this body okay and uh, for example if a surface is inclined at an angle theta this surface uh, i will say that this is ab this surface ab is inclined at angle theta this surface ab is making angle theta with x axis and a body is moving along this surface ab now in this case the direction of normal force is perpendicular to the direction of movement so r will always be perpendicular to the direction of movement of that body now we have uh, some cases of uh, components of forces and uh, the fri frictional force 